We're almost to 2020. We don't yet have flying cars. But I got Funkos. <laughs> Funkos, they're kind of stupid, but I love them. What's going on, guys? My name is Trevor. Welcome back to my channel, and we are almost to the close of the 2010s. The decade is almost over, and that means we gotta take a look back at all the best movies in each category. And today, we're talking superhero movies. I'm giving you my 10 favorite comic book movies of the last 10 years. But before I give you guys my list, go ahead and join me down in the comment section. Let me know how you guys list compares, and let's get this ball rolling. So at number 10 is Deadpool. The first movie of its kind. It's Ryan Reynolds playing Ryan Reynolds dressed up in a red leather suit. Need I really say more? I love Ryan Reynolds. I have one of the biggest man crushes ever on him. Him and Dak Shepard. Those are my guys. But it's Ryan Reynolds just playing Ryan Reynolds, as I said before. It's so different and it's freaking hilarious. The action is fantastic. The CGI is amazing. And Ryan Reynolds, it breaks that fourth wall and he has these awesome one-liners like, did I leave the stove on? It's really cool zoom-ins. It's really a movie I could watch anytime. I can just toss it on. I'm like, yep, I'm watching Deadpool. And I freaking love it. At number nine is Man of Steel. It's freaking Henry Cavill. He's a man. He's the Superman. He's literally built like a brick shithouse. But other than that, Henry Cavill's also a hunk, like, man crush that guy, too. But he plays, he plays Superman so damn well, man. I love him so much. You got Russell Crowe and Kevin Costner and Amy Adams and Michael Shannon. What kind of better cast is that? It's my favorite DCEU movie. It's a slow burn. Don't get me wrong. I understand it's a slow burn. But the score is so freaking amazing. I think it's my favorite part about the movie is the score. Also, the, um, the ending with all the action scenes with Superman kind of risking his life for Earth, even though Earth hates him because he's an alien, he's fighting Michael Shannon, they're going through building after building after building for like 20 minutes straight, you're like, holy shit, how long is this going to go on? But it's awesome, and I love it, and I think it's freaking amazing. Man, it's still, I got it right there. It's freaking dope. At number eight is Winter Soldier, my boy Captain America right there. Winter Soldier is so different in the MCU movies. It's more of a spy movie. I'm a big UFC fan. George St. Pierre, to me, is the greatest fighter of all time. He's in this movie. He's the first um, guy that uh, Captain America fights on the, cru the cruise ship, on the battleship. If you didn't know, a little fun fact for, for you. But it's just, it's a really cool superhero movie that's like a spy movie with such an emotional gut punch. They're like, when Captain America's getting the shit beat out of my bucket, and it's like, I'm with you to the end of the line. You're like, God damn it, I love you. I love you so much. It's emotional, it's intense, and it's awesome. I, I It's so dang awesome and so different. And that's why I'm really excited for Black Widow because it looks like it's kind of picking up on some things that Winter Soldier did right. The Rooster Brothers first film in the MCU, they have all their films on this list actually. We'll be getting those later. Bucky the Winter Soldier is just such a good bad guy. And the emotional tie between him and Steve, man, God, it just gets you. And it gets me in the feels. And I freaking love it. And Steve, the like, most iconic line in MCU history, on your left. At number seven, The Dark Knight Rises. That was literally my Bane impression for you. I'm really sorry about that. But I'm going to do it probably many more times. It is so goddamn good. I don't care what any of you say. Um, not as good as The Dark Knight, obviously, but The Dark Knight Rises, starring Tom Hardy as Bane and Christian Bale and Anne Hathaway, and I love it. It's so dang awesome, and they're doing that chant of, this, 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 bossa, bossa, and they're in the prison, he's got to climb out with no rope, and they're saying, rise, it's freaking awesome, and Bane's like, bro, I'm just wondering why you shoot him at, sorry, I'm just gonna keep doing it, because I love to do it, but Bane is a, he's the most awesome bad guy ever, and Tom Hardy, just he just embodies his character so well, he's got these freaking awesome lines when he beats the crap out of um batman it's like god like oh my god no you have my permission to die i was wondering what would break first your spirit or your body and snaps his back over his knee i literally say that all the time to my brother when we'll be running around hanging out i'm like i was wondering what would break first i do that line quite a bit i'm sorry for all the band impressions i love doing his voice so much even though i'm not the best at it bane is the dopest at number six guardians of the galaxy what a freaking adventure it is awesome chris pratt you got Dave Bautista, you got Zoe Saldana, you got uh, Vin Diesel, it says, I am Groot. And then you also got Rocket. It's just, it's like, I'm um, Rocket. Bradley Cooper as Rocket. It is so different, and I'm sure, like, everyone says this all the time, but, like, no one knew what this movie was really going to do. I didn't see it until years after the year. I was like, this is going to be stupid. No, it's not. It's going to be one of the best damn comic movies of the decade. That's what it's going to be. You got Yondu, this blue guy, goes... It's so funny, it's different, it's awesome, and it's just a, it's a different turn for the MCU. No one knew how it was going to go. Literally, we know it was going to have five of our favorite MCU characters, and when Gamora dies in Infinity War, you're just like, God, it's so emotional, and Chris Pratt and her relationship is so great, and Guardians of the Galaxy is freaking awesome. You got a dance battle to save the universe, that alone easily secures a spot on this list. Number five, keep cranking them out, Civil War. 
this is this is the epitome of epic along with a couple other movies coming up on the list this list but the airport scene just talk about that alone wow wow w o w well it is it's so awesome and for years i was um, team iron man i hate his team steve I was like yeah screw those guys but now i'm like man i'm kind of team steve right there man i don't i am team steve i i it's so divisive, and <laughs> like fans, I fight other fans and all that all the time. Like Team Iron Man, Team Steve. It's emotional. It's different. It's divisive, and that's what I love about it. It's got awesome action. You get introduced to Tom Holland, Spider Man, who is and forever will be my Spider Man. And this movie's so intense and so emotional. When Tony Stark is fighting Bucky and Steve at the same time, blows Bucky's arm off, and Steve is like, Tony, I'm sorry, Tony, but he was my friend. And Tony's like, so was I. You're like, oh my god. It's awesome, dude. It's it's awesome. And number four, 2012, The Avengers. Wow. It, this is dope. Like, that, that New York scene is epic as well. Like, the rest of these movies are just all epic. But, like, that New York scene is one of the best in the MCU. It's awesome. It's one of the first big team-up movies besides The Incredibles that Pixar did back in 2004. One of the first big superhero team-up movies that everyone's like, it needs to be too much personalities on one team. Too many superstars on one team. You got Thor. Iron Man, Captain America, Black Widow, Hulk, Hawkeye. And we get introduced to um, Hawkeye in this movie. And Bruce Banner, Mark Ruffalo as Hulk. And it's different. No one really knew how it was going to work. And it, it really worked. Loki is the second best villain in the MCU right behind my boy Thanos. Hulk grabs Loki and whips him back and forth. Literally the fun, one of the funniest moments in the MCU. The Avengers is one of the older movies on this list. And it's still one of the best. Number three is Logan. A dark different deep methodical masterpiece from james mangold it is awesome and not only is one of the best superhero movies of the 2010s it is one of the best movies of the 2010s hugh jackman is oscar not um, nominating like worthy he is oscar like winning in this performance it is so goddamn awesome and then it is intense and emotional the world's kind of gone to shit it is gory and it is dark and it is deep and it is beautiful that's the only word I can use to describe it. I know a lot of people die in this movie. I know there's blood everywhere, but this movie is beautiful. I love it with all my heart. I'm about to freaking watch it again. I just bought it on Blu-ray the other day. I have it on digital um, and on DVD. Now I own the Blu-ray, so definitely me popping this one on later. Logan is, it's, it's, it's fucking amazing. My runner-up is Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, my favorite anime movie of all time and one of the best comic book movies of all time. And I didn't see this in theaters. I tried to several times. Never got a chance to see it. I've seen it probably six times at home on my Blu-ray. Got it right there. And it is, wow. It is just pure, a comic book brought to life on screen. And I don't give a shit. No one's ever done that before. And that's what I love about it. This is something no one's done before. My family will come by and I'll be watching it. Like, what is that? Like, what are you watching? I'm like, this is a, a masterpiece. Don't even talk to me right now. And this just gives me hope that one day we'll get a live action Spider-Verse movie with Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, Tom Hardy, and Tom Holland. Tom Hardy's Venom, all of them on the big screen together. And you can even bring the guy who voices Miles Morales and put them all. Hey, you could just do something like that. And this gives me hope for that. And it is, this is the best animated movie of all time, in my opinion. Over Lion King, over all those shiznazis. It is awesome. And it, it is so goddamn worth to see. And it's one of my favorite movies ever. I love it so much. But coming in at number one, we have a tie. Infinity War and Endgame. It's the, there are two movies that hold such a deep place in my heart. Endgame got the steel book right there. And Infinity War, I got the 4K right over here. And Infinity War, I'm not kidding. I've seen this 35 times. I've seen Endgame eight times this year. And Infinity War messed me up emotionally. I watched it four times in the theater and it just messed me up so much. I also watched Endgame four times in the theater, which also messed me up so much. But what I love about Infinity War is that the villain won. It was the first time that happened. We never got to see what how it happened if our heroes lost. And they lost. And they didn't just lose. They got demolished. Thanos did what he was set up to do and he wiped out half of all living creatures. And... Thanos one entrance from when he starts out, beats the shit out of Loki, Loki, that's Loki and Hulk, beats the shit out of Hulk, kills Loki, and kills Heimdall within the first five minutes of the film. You know what he's about, and you gotta get everyone together. And Doctor Strange and Tony Stark is something we needed on screen more than this one film. It is the one of the best movies ever. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. And I love it so much. And it has a very, very funny movie. It's so action-packed. There's so many storylines going on. And it comes around to be it's such a beautiful film. And sets up one of the most like, epic, epic movies of all time. Avengers Endgame. 
and Avengers Endgame is was, was my favorite movie of the year, and it's gone down a notch after I watched it a couple more times. It has gone down one notch. But Avengers Endgame did something to me that I wasn't expecting, and it broke my heart. And that's exactly what I, I can say about it. I, like, was so, like, just distraught when I left the theater. I was like, I cannot believe that happened. And I loved it so much. It got so many chills. And especially the last epic portal battle scene. I watch it all the time on YouTube. And that's one of, that is the most epic scene of all time. Over anything else. And it is this movie is so epic and emotional. And Thanos got kind of the back burner. And we focused more light on Captain America. And him and Tony Stark are back on the screen together. And they're on freaking good terms together. And it's so good to see. And you can see five years later what happened. And just the aftermath. And the only thing is, Endgame is a little slow. Like, don't get me wrong. I'll agree. It is a little slow. But the end battle scene is 100% worth it. And rest in peace to Tony Stark, man. That it, that's when I left theater. I was crying in the theater. And I left. I was like, I don't know what the fuck to say right now. But I loved it so much. So there you guys have it. My 10 favorite comic book movies of the decade. If you guys are still watch with me, type in hashtag below in the comments. Hashtag Endgame vs. Infinity War. Let's try that. If you guys are still watch with me, let me know. So I know you guys still watch the end of the video. If you guys like this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. YouTube's changing. There's Kappa and bullshit coming around. So let me know if you guys are still rock with me. Thank you guys for watching. Do me a favor and go see a movie. I will see you guys next time. Peace.